Welcome everyone. So we have today a review for our polygons unit. Okay, polygons, parallelograms, so on and so forth. So let's get cracking on it. Decide whether the figure is a polygon, right? Yes or no, and explain why it is or is not. So the first one here, this is going to be a yes. Um, all straight sides. Okay, and no, it's close. It is close. All right. Um, taking a look at part B. Now, this is a weird one we haven't really encountered before. This is actually a no. If I had just this, I'd be okay. If I had just that, I'd be okay. But the fact that it's going around like this, this is no, um, because it's actually two shapes in one, and it overlaps, okay? Like, so it, it doesn't follow our definition of polygon. Finally, over here, this is going to be a yes, and if it is yes, pretty much you're just giving the same reason all the time. All sides straight, or all straight sides, and it's closed. Okay. Tell whether the polygon is convex or concave. Write it, and then explain why it is one or the other. Hint, draw a picture to explain. Guys, your explanation is just this. Extend your lines out. Do any go in? No, this is convex. Okay. Meanwhile, over here, if I extend my lines out, see how right here and here it's going inward? That's concave. So that's all I want for your explanation. It's as simple as that. Draw an example of the following polygons with the correct number of sides. I don't expect you guys to be artists, but I want you to try your best with this. One heptagon is seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, and again, like I'm not an artist either, but just a shape that has seven sides. If you do little seven tick marks, you're in good shape. Pentagon is five. That one's pretty good. Okay. Nonagon's nine. Bear with me here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Just do the very, very best you can, okay? And a rectangle, which is very specific, but okay, four-sided shape. You get the idea. All right angles. Cool. So now I got nine. This is four. All right. Um, here we go. Getting to the the good stuff. Use the theorems to find the value of each variable in the parallelogram. You must show all work to receive full credit. Guys, what do you know about angles back that are side by side inside a parallelogram? They have to be supplementary, which means you add them together, so them equal to 180. So 3x plus 120 equals 180. Subtract. 3x equals 60. I can divide. x equals 20. If I plug this back in, I get two or 3 times 20, which is 60, which gives me 60 plus 120 is 180. All's well. Part B, I have two variables, okay? Things across each other are congruent, so I can say 2m equals 70. Divide by 2, divide by 2, m equals 35. But then I want to find n. Well, n is right across from 70. They're right next to each other. They're consecutive. So n plus 70 equals 180. n equals 110, okay? All as well. So, good stuff. Um, part C. This is probably the first time you guys have seen this in a long time, but diagonals, the things in the same, like diagonal are congruent. So I can say here is 2u plus 2 equals 5u minus 10. All right, so I can subtract 2u over 2 equals 3u minus 10. I can add 10 over 12 equals 3u. I can divide by 3, u equals 4. Sorry about using my 4s up very similar. Now here's the tricky one. The v over 3, v divided by 3, equals 6. What's the opposite of divide? Multiply. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 here. v equals 18. Okay. So simple enough, but again, diagonals, you're making a congruent on the same diagonal. Next one, this is a very good problem, okay? If you look, I have an R, I have an S, and I have T's. 
Well, I can't do consecutive here because then we'd be adding up to 180, but I have two variables. But I can, across each other, make them congruent. So 3t minus 15 equals 2t plus 10. Okay, I'm going to solve for t. Subtract 2t, subtract 2t. t minus 15 equals 10. t equals 25. All right, one down. Plug this back in. 2 times 25 plus 10. Well, it's 50 plus 10 is 60 degrees, which means this has to be 60 degrees. 3 times 25 is 75 minus 15 gives you 60. What do things side by side have to add up to? 180. So 4r plus 60 equals 180. Subtract 60 over. Divide. r equals 30. Let me write that over here a little better so you can see it. Okay. And then down here, same idea. 3s plus 60 equals 180. Um, subtract 60. 3s equals 120. Divide. s equals 40. Okay? So we're looking good there. No big deal. On to the back. Use the diagram with the given information to solve for x. You must show all work to receive full credit. Oh, it's a four-sided shape. What do the four angles of a quadrilateral add up to? 360. So 4x plus 10 plus 108 plus 67 plus 3x equals 360. Okay? I'm going to combine together like terms. So 4x and 3x is 7x. 10, ooh, sorry, this is really hard to see. Oh no, can't really see it. I'll just do it off to the side then. 10 plus 108 plus 67 equals 185. Subtract 185 over. We get 175. 10 divided by 7, x equals 25. Um, start to get used to working with bigger numbers like this. You guys are going to Algebra 2 very, very soon. So you're going to be working with equations that are higher order. Okay, Just be aware of that. Part B, same idea. I got 82 plus 25x minus 2 plus 20x minus 1 plus 25x plus 1 equals 360. Plus 1 minus 1 cancels out. Let's see here. 25x plus 25x plus 20x is 70x. And then 82 minus 8 is 80. A little bit of mental math. Subtract 80 over. 70x equals 280. I divide by 70. x equals 4. Okay, And you can plug it back in if you would like to to see if you're good. All right, <clears throat> which figure below is not a convex, okay? Not convex means it needs to be concave. So out of these four answers, which ones are concave? Well, you can go through all of them, check them out if you'd like. You probably notice that I skipped part A. That's because part A is actually your convex one. It's going inward, okay? Which I think is the same one as on the front. Sometimes you can use that to your advantage on a test or a quiz. Um, which figure below is not a regular? It's been a while since we've done a regular. Regular means all sides and angles the same. Okay. So out of all of these, which one is not regular? Well, there's actually one that's not even a polygon. Part D is curved. It's not even a polygon. It doesn't work. Okay. Simple as can be. 8A. Use theorems to find the value of variable that makes a polygon parallelogram. Angles next to each other have to add up to 180. So x plus 10 plus x minus 10 equals 180. x and x is 2x. 10 minus 10 is 0. Divide by 2. x equals 90. We're good. Okay. Um, over here, we could do 3x equals 6. And I can do x plus 2 equals y minus 1. Always do the easy one first. I'm going to solve for this one. Divide by 3, divide by 3. x equals 2. 
Now I can plug this back in over here. 2 plus 2 equals y minus 1. Okay, I can add 1 over. Good. Alright. <clears throat> this last part, find the sum of the interior angles of the following n side polygons. Here's your equation. N minus 2 times 180. I'm giving you the N. All I want you guys to do is plug this in to your calculator. Okay? Um, which, don't go anywhere. I'm running across the room. I want to show you this in the calculator. I want to get one that works. So, parentheses, 10 minus 2 times 180. It's 1440. That means that for a 10-sided polygon, or a decagon, all angles add up to 1440, 1,440 degrees. Okay, remember that pattern we talked about in class, plus 180, plus 180, plus 180? Now where does this really come in handy? I'll look at part B, n equals 27. So I can plug in 27 for n times 180. Okay, back to here. Parentheses, 27 minus 2 times 180. The answer is 4,500 degrees. Okay, so for a 27 gun, all interior angles need to add up to 14, 4,500. Okay? <clears throat> Pardon me. <clears throat> so, there's your quiz review. Okay? Um, we will have some additional practice the next day. But as always, keep up the good work. And good luck. We're all counting on you.